You know, so far a hoodie has gotten most of the hate on this channel. What can I do to change that? Hmm. The Death Note Netflix movie came out a couple weeks ago, and somehow, as they always do whenever anything Death Note related comes out, people use the opportunity to shit on Nier. Well, I'm gonna come out and say it. I love Nier. He is my favorite character in Death Note. So many people think he's terrible, or he's an L clone with no originality, or he's just a plain old jerk, or that Mello should have won in the end. Let me tell you why you're all wrong about Nier. Frankly, it's been a long time coming. There are a lot of complaints about his personality. Frankly, I can't argue with that, because if you don't like his personality, I can't get you to like it. Unless you blatantly misunderstand what his personality traits are. I think one misunderstanding of his personality that gets thrown around a lot is embodied in this scene. Here we see the SPK headquarters as being stormed by rabid Kira supporters being led by Demigawa. Nier has a contingency plan to use money that he inherited from L to create a distraction so that he and the SPK members can escape. Some people point to this scene as evidence that Nier is wasteful and that he disrespects L. This is a huge misunderstanding of Nier's motivation here, and of what this scene represents. Nier believes that there are good people in the world who agree with what Kira is doing because they believe that it will lead to a better world. However, he also believes that there are people who just want to jump on the bandwagon because they're too stupid or too weak-willed to examine Kira's philosophy for themselves. He knows that those people are the ones at his door, and he wants to demonstrate their lack of dedication to Kira, which they use as an excuse for violence, by proving how easily distracted they are by blinding them with money. He uses the last remnant of L on this earth to display how worthless these Kira supporters are. From a thematic standpoint, L's battle with Kira was all about defending himself from Kira's attempts to kill him. If there was ever a move that Light was about to make that could prove dangerous to L, L foresaw that move and took action to stop Light from being able to make it. And here, the last remnant of L is blocking Kira's attack. With all of that in mind, this moment should be celebrated, but instead it's pointed to as evidence that Nier has a bad personality by people who don't understand what the point of this moment is. It's a testament to Nier's respect of L. By showing everyone that Demigawa and his army of blind followers are greedy and not noble, he challenges Kira's very philosophy that people who oppose him are the evil ones, and that good people would inevitably support him. This moment is evidence that Nier is a perfect foil for Light's own belief of himself as a god, but we'll get to that later. The next point that I want to combat is the idea that Nier is a clone of L. Nier and Mello are both like L in their own way, because they were both raised to be L. Nier is the intellectual side that has an out there way of thinking that leads him to make connections that no one else really sees, and Mello is the emotional side that is driven to act and will do whatever is necessary to achieve victory. That's the idea behind the theme that the two would have to work together to beat Kira. The most iconic Mello scenes are him speeding down the highway on a motorcycle with a hostage, or blowing up his headquarters to escape capture. He even attains a position of power that allows him to combat Kira through violence, namely finding a mafia boss that even Kira couldn't identify and cutting off his head Jason Todd style. While Nier attains a position of power through more bureaucratic means, Nier outsmarts and Mello acts. This makes Mello stand out more as being different from L than Nier does, as he's even more radical than L was. The contrast distorts people's perceptions of the character, causing them to view L and Nier as beings too similar despite their many differences, simply because they're both understated personalities and socially inept geniuses. Really, people simply overestimate the actual similarities between the two characters when all that they really have in common is their possession of a genius-level intellect and general dismissal of social norms. And, of course, their childishness. Finally, we have the claim that the final arc of Death Note, the battle between Nier, Mello, and Light, was the weakest in the series because of Nier. Even if this is what you believe, it doesn't make a lot of sense that people seem to pin that on Nier. What a lot of people love about L's interactions with Light is how he confronts and challenges him almost instantly, often coming out and saying that he's suspicious of him and trying to catch him off guard. If these interactions were something that really pulled you into their conflict, then that's all the more reason that you should love Nier, because he's constantly doing the same thing. The very first sentence he ever says to Light is accusatory and throws him off guard from the very beginning. He's the character that keeps the cat and mouse element of the series alive. The characters that cause the biggest tonal shifts are Mello and Takada, as Mello's actions elevate the level of spectacle we're used to, and Takada's involvement with Light adds a romantic element to the series. Personally, I think the Yotsuba arc is the weakest in Death Note, and I'd even say that the dynamic between Nier, Mello, and Light made the show more interesting and less predictable than the dynamic between L and Light, just by adding another major player. My favorite arc in the show is the first nine episodes, when Light and L are both making moves to reveal each other without being in direct contact. It's the most interesting part of the show because being unable to directly speak to each other forces them to be creative regarding how they try to get to each other. Light leaving coded messages and suicide notes and L televising what can essentially be called a diss track are two of my personal favorite events. 
Don't get me wrong, I think every single arc in this show is a masterpiece. But the specific setup of two anonymous forces subtly working against one another was the most interesting part of the show for me. In that sense, Nier's battle with Light feels like a return to form. They are able to speak to each other directly, but Nier still has to figure out who Kira is and what he's up to, while Light has to try to figure out ways to kill Nier. It's different enough that it's not a complete rehash of what we've seen before, while also having the same allure as the earliest episodes of the show, and it's all thanks to Nier. Now that I'm done defending him, let's get into more of what I like about Nier. Looking at all of the major players in Death Note, you'll see that most of them have an identifiable quirk. Specifically, the ones related to Whammy's house. L has his iconic sweet tooth, Mello has his penchant for chocolate, and Nier has his toys. One of the things that I like about Nier is that his toys actually mean something. Contrasted from L's sweets accompanying him in most scenes just as another way to make him a weird character, or Mello's chocolate pretty much adding nothing to his character at all. Every single time we see him playing with his toys, it's a metaphorical representation of his thought process. For example, take this scene from the final chapter of Death Note, the flash forward one year after the conclusion of the Kira case. Here we see Nier surrounded by an impossibly huge house of cards. The metaphor here is that he's been spending the last year building something incredibly intricate and substantial, his career as L. There's also the scene where Light and Nier speak to each other for the first time, and Nier is tossing darts at a dartboard while he explains his thoughts on the Kira case. With each comment, he tosses a dart at the board. He suggests that Kira might have killed Mello's hostage, which would suggest that he's someone with access to the Japanese police force's information. He's correct, but he doesn't quite have all the details. At the conclusion of his statement, he misses the dartboard. He's not quite on the mark. For another example, there's a moment when Nier calls Light to tell him that they'll be meeting in the near future. During the call, Nier is building a model of a tower. Then we see imagery of Nier and Mello standing face to face in a similar tower. The tower being built by Nier metaphorically foreshadows that Nier is in control of the confrontation. For a less subtle example, there's a scene where many of the SPK members are killed by the Death Note, and later a scene where Aizawa first calls Nier. At the same time that the first SPK member falls, a stack of dice that Nier had been meticulously piecing together falls. It all comes tumbling down as the organization that Nier had built from the ground up is dismantled by Mello. When he talks with Aizawa, he begins building a new stack of dice. Clearly like the House of Cards in the one-shot, these stacks of dice represent his career as a detective, or more specifically, his Kira investigation. These metaphors are abundant in the series and they add a level of insight to Nier's worldview that's pretty interesting to me. He uses his toys to represent the world and plays with them the same way that he plays at life. This is consistent with him referring to L's death and Light's defeat as both having lost the game. Life's a game in Nier's Yugi Moto, baby. Now for the most important point of this entire video. Not only is Nier a cool character, he's also the perfect person to succeed L and to defeat Kira. The rivalry between L and Kira is elevated to absolute importance in the series. But what L and no one in the show seems to acknowledge or even realize is that this rivalry actually deifies Kira. L's very introduction proves beyond a doubt to the world that Kira does exist, that someone out there is actually punishing the wicked. He puts a huge spotlight on Kira and their rivalry from the very moment that he becomes known to the world. A man with godlike powers versus the greatest mind in the world. L states multiple times that stopping Kira is a cause that's worth his life. This not only deifies light in the eyes of society at large, resulting in cultist followers like Taro Mikami forming around the world, but it especially does so in the eyes of light himself. This dude really starts buying into his own hype like crazy, to the point that by the time he does meet Nier, he calls him far inferior to L and dismisses him as a threat. The reason that this makes Nier a great foil to light is that Nier does not think light is special, allowing him to humble him in unique ways. Nier says something to Light that I, as a viewer, had wanted to say to him throughout the entire show, and something that I guarantee you L would never say. Nier calls Kira, Light Yagami, nothing more than a crazy serial killer. Light, who had defeated the greatest detective on Earth, his greatest personal challenge, is bested by a child who doesn't even grasp the importance of what's at stake. And it's the ultimate reality check. While Nier tells Light that he's nothing special, he holds up the Death Note as the most dangerous weapon of mass murder in history. The spotlight isn't on Light for Nier. He instead identifies the truly unique evil and remarkable detail in this case, the Death Note itself. Light isn't special to Nier. The Death Note is. This, I think, is what makes Nier the only character in the show that actually grasps the truth of the situation. The reason that Mello wouldn't be as good of a foil as Nier was, despite the fact that he's in the same position of being L's successor, is that he has the same problem that Light and L had, but regarding Nier. To him, his rivalry with Nier is the most important thing. Rather than denouncing Light as Nier did, he'd probably have said something like, beating you was the best way to beat Nier. All of this made Nier an even more perfect candidate for final victor than Mello or even L himself in my opinion. Light believes that he is a god, 
in that it takes the greatest man he's ever known to even pose a challenge to him. Nier defeats him, basically saying, I'm not as great a man as El was. I'm not as experienced a detective or as righteous as he was. However, I'm still enough to beat you, because you, like Yagami, are not special. That's what I love about Nier, both as a character and as a part of the plot.